Welcome to the Engineering Influence Podcast presented by the American Council of Engineering Companies. Today, we're talking with Dr. Rick Heibrich, who recently joined Stantec to, to lead the firm's Global Smart Cities Initiative. Stantec is a leader in smart cities, which is a fast-growing and vibrant sector in the design services industry. And Dr. Heibrich is here to share his views on where the sector is right now and where it might go. Thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you, Gary. So just to start off, just uh, to sort of uh, a bigger picture, what, when people hear about smart cities, they'll often think about stoplights that adapt to traffic or perhaps autonomous car share vehicles. What do you see as uh, smart cities? Yeah, thanks for that question. It's actually a very good question because smart cities, as you allude to, means a lot of things to a lot of people. And with that, I guess it answers the question by saying this is really a platform approach, uh, a broad system-wide thinking about how we can innovate our communities and our municipalities to deliver different and unprecedented value to its constituents. So a, a smart city is nothing really more than looking at our communities as sustainable, resilient, and of course, being highly inclusive, but those communities that then leverage smart technologies such as IoT, the Internet of Things, or 5G, connectivity, platforms, and the list goes on and on in today's digital age. Second, smart governance like policy, data-driven decision-making, uh, how to deal with privacy and procurement. And third, that they use smart partnerships with a big focus on collaboration, how to bring together the, the nurturers, the carers, the providers, the industries, public-private partnerships, education, and bringing smart technology, smart governance and partnerships together to ultimately create social, environmental and economic benefits for everyone involved in the community. I'd say doing that well makes a smart city. I, that was, I, I went on your, your firm's website and you, you dedicate quite a bit to smart cities. Um, and looking at your description of your team on the website, it, it includes many, many people from a very uh, diverse and wide group of, of fields, um, things that I wouldn't have thought of. And um, is that because Stantec provides the services across a wide, a wide spectrum? You know, you mentioned smart, smart governance, for example, smart partnerships, helping, helping cities or, or corporations do these things? Yeah, if a city is a network of, of uh, urban systems like transportation, transit, buildings, utilities, water infrastructure, you add all that up and you then add to that a layer of intelligent data infrastructure, technology, and then do what we talked about earlier about how do we now take put all that together and create a smart city, then you realize that a firm like Stentec has for many, many years, incredible experience in all these urban systems. We have a very strong global buildings division, water division, infrastructure division, um, and across all those uh, urban systems and sectors and expertise that we have, we have um, introduced smart solutions such as smart uh, mobility or smart utilities or smart buildings. And so the sum of all those parts really are kind of the building blocks that make a smart city. And so our collective experience and our collective expertise across all those sectors and all those urban systems uh, put us in a great position to kind of lead and help shape smart city conversations and smart city journeys for our municipal and uh, community development customers. Are, are all your customers public uh, public, or do you also work with the corporations and such for this in this? Yeah, uh, both. Anybody who really builds a community, and a community can be a vertical community, a residential uh, tower that goes up, uh, a small neighborhood, a community development, land development, but also municipalities and governments that look at cities at large are all uh, customers of ours and to all these different stakeholder groups. And frankly, they also work together in order to truly build integrated smart cities. Um, they all um, are kind of interested in the evolution of digital technologies to aid in the outcomes that they try to achieve. And so we're working across all private and public sector uh, with small 
all the way up to very large uh, communities and, and cities. And, and on that, that theme of size, um, is, how small can, it, can a, uh, a smart city, in quotes, uh, effort be? Can it be a single building or does it need to be integrated into a, into a block or a neighborhood or a city? Well, the, the real value of a smart city is if you kind of extend it beyond its, uh, its boundaries. Uh, but as we said earlier, it is kind of a, a sum of building blocks. So you can have a relatively small building that is looking at smart technologies to reduce an environmental footprint, for instance, or to generate new revenue opportunities or to deliver new experience for the tenants in that building. And they then uh, apply kind of smart city thinking, this kind of platform approach towards transforming what it is that they do. So the concept of smart city, knowing that it's not one skew or one product, but it's kind of a, a mindset on how to apply these technologies and smart governance and smart partnerships towards delivering innovative future ready outcomes can be applied from small to large and anything in between. And I think eventually it's the connection of all those pieces and kind of how we kind of glue all this together to deliver sustainable uh, experiences of value to citizens that really turn us into a journey that everyone stands to benefit from. Um, in, in, in that, is, is Stantec the provider of the glue? Is that, is that what you do? You sort of help people get into the mindset? Yeah, we have, as we said earlier, being a large firm with a global footprint, we have lots of expertise in the different specific sectors. Uh, but being kind of vert vertically integrated, we can connect smart mobility conversations with smart building conversations with smart infrastructure conversations and work with our clients to explore the incremental opportunities that lie at the intersections of those uh, urban systems. So yes, I think we are um, uh, a, an organization that can really help our clients, both large and small, both public and private, on their smart city journey. And um, is, it a, is it a case of, of they come to you and say, we want to be a smart city, or they come to you with a, a, a raft of problems and you see that there's a smart city solution in that? Well, personally, I've seen both. I have had customers that say, I'd like uh, one smart city, please. And of course, then you break that down and say, well, that's not how it works. Uh, it starts exactly with what you say, uh, Jerry, and that is, uh, what are the problems we're trying to solve? What are the outcomes one wants to deliver to its constituents? And that can be energy reduction in a building, that can be government services at a municipal level or a traffic congestion at a transit or a transportation level. And so once we start to apply design thinking, if you will, to breaking down or deconstruct what the challenges are, and then build it back up with smart technologies and governance and partnerships, we can um, help identify and design sustainable and resilient solutions uh, that are meant to last and uh, that are not one-off shiny objects or cool features and functionalities, but that become truly um, through this platform approach, something that on top of which our clients can continue to build and continue to evolve and grow. Yeah, I would, it, it's, it, to my understanding, it's a, it's a, it's a tech, technology heavy area. And with the rapid pace of technological development, it seems to me you would always, you, It'd be hard to stay ahead of the head of the curve. How, is that a is that a is that a problem? Um, that's a good question. That is only a problem if every conversation ends up being a technology conversation. If we again lead with the business outcomes, the purpose, what are we trying to achieve, and really think through people process and technology for uh, its solutions, then not, it may not always be necessarily a technology heavy solution. It can be a process re-engineering, a process redesign solution or a mindset culture uh, solution. Now, uh, it is undoubtedly that technology is a big uh, enabler to all this. That's simply the economy we live in, uh, being in this digital world or fourth industrial revolution, if you will. So. 
I think it, it is upon every community developer, large and small, to embrace these new technologies to uh, achieve the goals that they have. And then you're correct. Um, this is a scary moving world. There's always something new, always something better, always something faster. And so breaking this down to foundational building blocks, what are the minimum uh, features one need to have, which is really connectivity, uh, digital infrastructure like broadband. It's embracing this notion of the internet of things, knowing that everything already and into the future will be instrumented and will be connected. So how can we connect those devices and things and extract data from them? Uh, the next layer really is kind of this integration platform. How do we think about a software or an application approach that glues all these pieces together and through analytics and, and, and using data, can we generate these outcomes and experiences and services? Knowing then that the applications on top of it, the smart parking solution or the intelligent lighting solution or a dashboard solution, they will come and go, uh, but they now benefit from this very foundational approach. So I do believe that there is a way to break this down in very fundamental components that don't change that often, uh, but it does require, require to think like a whole system and that we need to apply kind of digital principles that um, the technologies will change, the capabilities will change. We have to be able to evolve, to adapt, and whatever we build has to be expendable and sustainable so we don't lock ourselves up in the decision we make now that we then cannot afford to transform um, years from now. So this leads to say that this must be a mindset. This is an approach. This is a platform thinking, design thinking methodology. The technology is a means to an end. Technology will come and go. And Stentec can kind of help look at what are the best of breed technologies, the best of breed capabilities, and how do we help you solve what you want to achieve? And how is technology just one component to achieving that? Um, one issue, obviously, that's facing a lot of a, a lot of cities uh, right now is, is uh, climate change, resilience, and such. And smart cities is is offered as one way to deal with resilience. Do you see that um, in, uh, in 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 your work? Yeah, big time. And in my dealings with communities or municipalities, they talk a lot about the sustainable development goals from the United Nations as kind of guiding principle to think about sustainability in the broadest uh, sense. And then uh, topics like climate change, carbon reduction and energy efficiency uh, kind of pop up in all the different uh, urban systems, in our buildings, in our transportation system, and for sure in our utility. As we see particularly legacy systems, existing infrastructure uh, uh, cities, uh, start to embrace all these new capabilities, all that is having a huge impact on the supply and the demand, and not all utilities are ready for it. So getting involved in projects around grid modernization and microgrid and smart grid conversations, getting involved in our building sector with our clients about how do we reduce energy consumption and can curtail carbon out of our buildings? How can we maybe optimize utilization of our buildings so we can actually do more with less space? That's ultimately the most sustainable thing to do. Uh, all the way to um, what we did in Montreal is like a pilot on um, electric shuttles, autonomous electric shuttles, and start to think, how do we move people around, um, not leveraging kind of a gas uh, a rolling stock infrastructure? So in all those urban systems, sustainability has a component. And I think it's one of those horizontal themes that touches everything we do in our communities that uh, can have a substantial impact if we take a systems approach, a hol holistic platform thinking approach to reduce uh, the emissions of our, our cities. Yeah, perhaps that Montreal example or, or a different one, could you maybe just sort of draw up a, a, a little wider picture of, of example, how, you, how this applies, uh, this resilience applies? Yeah, I mean, there's ample projects, of course, that we've been involved in. And as you said earlier, sometimes it's like a point solution or a small problem we try to, try to solve. But the 
the, the fundamental or foundational approach allows us then to scale it. So like in uh, New York, in the US and the Bronx, we have like the River, River Bay co-generation project uh, where we build an urban, we didn't build, they build together, we build an urban power plant um, that uh, had to be remain in operation during like the superstorm uh, Sandy. So how do we create kind of a, an island mode and protect our um, microgrids infrastructures? Uh, at a much smaller scale at Algonquin College in, um, in Ottawa, in Canada, we actually build a, a microgrid uh, and solar energy and battery storage infrastructure with our client. And there, uh, which I do believe is very powerful, is we open that up to its students to become a living lab as well. So not only we're working with our clients to build and implement environmental and sustainability and uh, projects. But now we can actually help teach the next generation engineers to make sure that we learn from these experiences and start to really scale this. So from kind of a community uh, based thinking to building based microgrid based thinking, there's uh, projects in our uh, energy and utility teams um, that uh, kind of span the whole gamut. And if we start to think about the a digitization of so of these solutions like smart utility or smart grid solutions we can really scale this and use that as an engine to make our cities eventually um, net zero and much more environmentally sustainable another issue uh, uh, that uh, comes up and and one that's uh, that uh, ACEC focuses on a lot is, is social equity um, smart cities is often um, introduced as a as a way of achieving or improving social equity do you do you, how does that play out in in uh, at, at stantec um, um yes i think that is correct uh although one could argue that technology also introduces social inequity examples of those that have and that are connected uh, when we start to think about li data literacy or digital literacy can everyone really participate in these digital economies and new opportunities so this is i think um, a big role for our for our clients and we work with them to look at how do we ensure that the literacy and embracing technology and participating in the digital economy is equal part and when we think about that being diverse and highly inclusive and making sure everyone has access and can participate. So this comes back down to the, the fundamentals of a smart city. And one of them is it starts with broadband everywhere and for everyone. Uh, there are still communities out there, including some of our largest cities where not everyone has <clears throat> or can afford um, access to broadband technology. And the moment that happens, you start to create uh, a disconnect and you leave people behind. So I think when smart cities conversations are happening, certainly at the municipal level, there is an accountability to our municipal leaders and us as a firm uh, through policy and governance and uh, th thinking about those components, we wanna participate in helping close those gaps and make sure that all participants, all citizens, all stakeholders in the community can equally participate in the benefits of smart city and ultimately um, uh, create kind of economic growth and economic opportunity and opportunity at large to, to, uh, to everyone. We see, for instance, their roles of public institutions like libraries or community centers play a big role because they're kind of nodes in our urban fabric where community naturally gathers and that now can kind of become a jumping board to bring everyone along and make sure that the smart city is inclusive and does not leave anybody behind. As a final question, I sort of focused uh, specifically on the engineering industry. And, and um, do you see smart cities as continuing to be sort of a vertical service line or do you see it working its way basically to being a foundation under sort of all engineering service lines? Yeah, I believe, uh, and I think the way we look at it, uh, certainly at Stentec, it's uh, kind of a horizontal foundational approach. Uh, there are smart solutions and technology solutions in every sector for every problem. That world will continue to grow and evolve. And this notion of the internet of things and blockchain and big data that will uh, continue to give us the tools to solve point solutions. The smart city is really the one that kind of takes that horizontal 
um, a whole system thinking approach and start to think about what is the value of connecting those dots? How does ma data move uh, between systems and allow us through analytics uh, and AI to create incremental value on top of what otherwise would have been maybe a siloed solution? Uh, the same with the digital infrastructure and the notion of cybersecurity. We cannot think about cybersecurity just wrapped around one business case or use case. It must be a strategic, holistic point of view. So I think the smart city introduces some horizontal thinking, some platform approach that requires design thinking, that requires whole system appreciation on top of which we can create sector specific or system specific solutions. Uh, but the true value is going to be how we kind of leverage investments already made. So we don't build networks for every answer separately, but we start to create some common share platforms, which is I think where the smart city um, can add a ton of value in the innovation and transformation of our communities, both small and big. Well, great. I, I appreciate you coming on to talk to us about this. You're more than welcome. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. And uh, you've been listening to the Engineering Influence podcast presented by the American Council of Engineering Companies. Till next time.